welcome to your February love forecast. I am recording from Mexico. I will be here for a little while. So your reading is taking place outside today. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Mexico and I'm going to be using the wooden tarot for your reading. Uh, I'm rotating decks this month just to keep things fresh. So I've selected the wooden tarot for your reading today. Um, I feel that it resonates really well with your sign right now. So uh, I keep any things on my tarot cloth <clears throat> to pull off. So it looks good now. Make sure you can see everything. All right. Let's go ahead and get started shuffling. Spirit, what are the love messages and energies that you have for the sign of Leo for the month of February 2017? This reading is for all my Leo suns, moons, and risings out there and those on the cusp. What will be so for Leo? What are the love messages and energies you have, Spirit? Messages and energies that you have for the sign of Leo for the month of February 2017. What do they need to know regarding their love lives? At the bottom of the deck, we have the Hermit, and he is reversed. So, the card at the bottom of the deck usually talks about the overall theme of your reading. And, uh, the Hermit, the Hermit is, uh, someone, or the, an energy of someone that is literally sleeping. Could, <coughs> could be an energy of withdrawal going into your shell a little bit. Um, there's also some antisocial behavior. Uh, the energy of some kind of antisocial person could be dealing with a Virgo or someone that has Virgo energy. But the hermit is a recluse. Uh, when he's reversed, he is very reclusive. So, what are you hiding away from in February, Leo? You may have your back turned to people, or you may be uh, jumping in bed and trying to escape from, your, from the, uh, the demands of the outside world. But it's only because you are um, incubating your... Regaining your strength and finding your light, finding your inner light. But um, it could also be that you are, uh, like I said, in some kind of sleep phase in your life where you just feel like you need to get away from society. So let's take a look at your cards. Three of stones in reverse. This is the three of wands. In reverse, page of stones, but crosses you. Foundation. We have death in reverse. Crowding position. God of plumes in reverse. This is the ace of cups in reverse. Recent past. We have the knight of stones in reverse. Near future. We have the seven of plumes in reverse. How you see yourself. You have the knight of bones in reverse. In your environment. This is also how your significant other may be viewing or dealing with you. They have the hangman in reverse. Your hopes and fears are the six of stones or the six of wands. 
Your outcome for the month of February is the Page of Blooms in reverse. <clears throat> so you walk into the month of February with the energy of the Three of Wands in reverse. It basically tells me that you're not waiting anymore. Maybe you are waiting on someone to make a move. Could be that you had, um, some of you are returning from a trip. Uh, the other possibilities uh, talk about uh, not having long-term vision. So it could be some of you are in a relationship and you don't really see a long-term plan for the future. And those of you who are single, you may just not be looking. The energy that crosses you is the Page of Stones or the Page of Wands. This is definitely fire sign energy. This is definitely, this could be your energy as well. The Page of Stones is a young fire sign energy. Very um, adventurous. Always looking for an adventure. And um, there's also a lot of innocent excitement with this card as well as potential new admirers. The Page of Stones is the person that uh, is like the cat caller. See something pretty walking down the street, see something handsome walking down the street. He or she will most definitely uh, let the person, let them know that they think that person is hot. But in the challenge position, it's saying that uh, getting that energy, feeling that way, is difficult for you. It could be that this is something that's helping you as well, but I'm seeing it uh, as an obstacle in your situation. Page of Stones is also someone who's a bit immature. They're almost childlike in terms of their, um, their naivete, because we have like the fawn here, like a, a doe. She's a doe, actually. And the... Uh, Lepidocrystite crystals, crystals are representative of that fire energy as well. So, it's a little bit tricky, but I think that some of you may be um, looking for a new opportunity uh, in love, something exciting. You want to start something exciting but I feel like uh, either you're not gonna wait around for this person or you um, don't have any major plans you're just kind of looking for something quick uh, I don't know where to go next you have this fire sign energy in your recent past as well the knight of stones is in the first the knight of stones it's like the Knight of Wands, really. It's that Leo, Aries, or Sagittarius energy. When he's reversed, um, of course, this is the energy passing out of your life in February. So one to two weeks back in the past, uh, the Knight of Stones in reverse is someone that is resisting pleasure or their ability to act uh, with passion has been blocked. Uh, there may also be um, some travel delays. It can represent travel issues. In terms of love, I feel that this is the energy of someone who is holding back, resisting. They may be um, too careful about their movements or uh, rushing. They may have rushed into something really fast in the recent past, and now they're finding themselves that, finding out that in the current situation, there's not really uh, a vision of the future. They haven't thought things through. So their plans, like their, one of their plans, some of their plans could have fallen through. I'm seeing three here, so this can involve three people. Perhaps one of those options is no longer available.
in your root position, you have death in reverse. So it could be that, you know, you are uh, burning bridges, running away from something in your life. When death is in reverse in this position, it's saying that you are resisting change. You're afraid of change. You're afraid of making plans with people. You're afraid of uh, thinking about the future. And that could be part of the reason why this new inspira this ins this inspiration is in your challenge position, this new beginning. Um, also, in terms of your thoughts and feelings and your conscious level, you have the God of Blooms in reverse. So there could be um, it could be a rejection in terms of love. It could also say that. Um, There's a feeling of being emotionally drained in some situation, from some situation. But I'm really seeing it as um, you, uh, this is, represents the root of love. This represents unconditional love. And when it's reversed, um, I'm, I'm getting the words refusing to see something, refusing to see the love that you have in your life, refusing to grasp hold of, I mean, here he's pull, pushing the, the lotus away, he's not grasping it, he's rejecting it, so I'm getting, you're thinking about a rejection of, and love or thinking about rejecting someone else's love. Either that or you could just be feeling very emotionally drained in February, um, which is why you don't have plans for the future. Your, one of your plans fell through. Uh, could be with a specific person. It doesn't have to be. You're moving into a phase in your life where you're going to be thinking very pragmatically about things. If you had any illusions, those are going to start to become, or you may have had many options in love. I think you're going to start to see things a little bit more realistically. Because this is about dealing with the mundane world, pragma pragmatic things. Um, all of those cups that were upright with the Seven of Blooms representing options and fantasies and illusions. I feel like uh, going into the middle of February, you're starting to just see them for what they are, empty promises, castles in the sky maybe, nothing is what it seemed, um, you have to be more realistic now, which is why you see yourself as the Knight of Bones in reverse. Some of you have Virgo Taurus or Capricorn in your chart because this is Earth sign energy. But the Knight of Bones, when he comes up reverse, reversed, is someone who's very stuck in their life. They're either moving very slowly or they feel bogged down by like either their work situation or their love life. It's a very boring energy. So it's possible that you're just bored or feeling very stuck in your life where you are. But it has to do with resisting change. It has to do with running away from a situation in your life that you're afraid to deal with. Of course you're not going to be excited about something if you don't see potential in it. Or if you feel rejected, if you feel like the love is not there, the love is gone. In your environment, you have the hanged man in reverse. It's very interesting that this is a bat because I've been seeing a lot of bats lately where I am here. There's actually a fruit tree in the uh, municipal square in the park over here. And uh, the bats come and feed at the, uh, the fruit bats come and feed on the fruit. But it's rare to see them. It's rare to see them. They come out at night and um, they're blind. Obviously, they use echolocation to, to find the fruit. Um, 
or, or what is it, radar, uh, echo, echo radar. So, actually, there are some cards here, like the hangman, for example, and the hermit, that are nocturnal. Like, the bear is in hibernation when I see him in reverse, and the hangman is a bat that's basically standing upright. Here he's hanging upside down, sleeping. Here he's awake at night. I think of him kind of uh, as like a little vampire. But anyway, this is in your environment. And this is how your significant other, the person you think about the most, maybe be when you're dealing with you. I think that they are thinking a lot about you. I think that they are waiting for you, and they've been waiting for you for such a long time that the sun has come up. They were Here they are, they were sleeping, and they're still thinking about you. <clears throat> Maybe there hasn't been a lot of communication between you two. It's possible that, um, you know, the hangman in reverse is someone who is um, a bit of a charlatan, so that they kind of see themselves as better. They're, they don't, uh, they, they see themselves as above, above everyone a bit, and... But it only has to do, it has to do with more like um, how they view themselves spiritually. So it's possible that they see you or they're dealing with you as someone who um, overanalyzes a situation. But but again, this is an energy in your environment of having to wait for a very long time. Someone that has been on hold. Is there anyone in your life that you have not communicated with that you are interested in that has been waiting for you for a very long time? And they probably have been thinking about you a lot. That's the feeling that I'm getting. In your hopes and fears, you have the six of stones. So you do want this love. You want to conquer this person. You want to score. You want victory. You want absolute victory. This is a prize. You want your prize. Your outcome is the page of blooms in reverse, which I'm afraid to say is a bit of a disappointment in love. You may be dealing with someone who is slightly toxic, uh, possibly a water sign like a Cancer, Pisces, or Scorpio. I am getting a Pisces, but it could be Cancer or Scorpio as well. If not that, then you're just dealing with a situation where there may be a disappointing message. Um, <clears throat> a disappointment and love. Usually it comes in the form of a text message or uh, email. But it could also just be that you are slightly disappointed in your love life. It's nothing major. It's still a page. Either that or you are... Uh, just dealing with someone who is very immature emotionally and they don't know what they want. They really don't. I mean, this is still puppy love here, so. Well, Leo, um, my advice to you, my advice to you is there's something that wants to change in your life or something that you need to confront so that you can let new love in and let yourself dream and fantasize as much as you want. I think this will um, kind of have a domino effect in all areas of your life. Normally, if the cards are reversed in the small cross or even in the larger cross, it will, they will have an effect on each other. So there's some blocked energy in your reading, but it's it has to do with fixing things one by one. You know, turning this card up, right?
you want to be able to have a long-term vision. You want to be able to make plans. If it's travel that you want to do, if it's exploring, if it's looking for something better, you want to be able to go ahead and do that. You want to be able to feel uh, this new love come into your life. You want to welcome it. So, <clears throat> we're at 20 minutes. Of course, we don't we can't control how other people respond to us. And if there's someone in your environment who's acting a bit uh, like they're too good for you or they're just overthinking things, I mean, that's their prerogative, right? And you, you need to keep working on yourself, keep moving forward on your path, and uh, not worry about what other people think or how other people respond. Because we, we are what we attract. I'm going to pull one message from the Rumi Oracle by Alana Fairchild. I'll let you know in advance that these are very deep messages. The messages will take me about five minutes to get through. They are long messages. So some cards just flipped out here. Of course, I can't, uh, you know, I'd love to keep both of these messages, but I'm going to have to pick one. I wish you guys were here with me to help me pick this message. I'm going to choose this one. It says, from nothing to everything. Here, I'll, uh, I'm, oops, oops, oops. I'll move that there so you can see the card. And I'm going to read a little bit from the book here. This is card 16. Oh, my friend, if you are longing to be written on, become a blank page. Rumi. Have you been shedding your skins, your layers, your certainties? Gone are fixed identities and definite opinions. Keep casting those shackles aside, even if you fear you are releasing too much, and then perhaps you shall cease to exist. You shall only cease to exist as you have known yourself to be thus far. Another emanation of you awaits, blazing angel. Something more beautiful and true. Yet here you are at the pruning stage like a gardener for the soil. Shall the garden spring back to life, or will the enthusiastic denuding process be rather too much and unintentionally kill off the garden altogether? Fear not. Your soul is made of hardy stuff. It can handle a lot of calling and will shine even brighter for it. There is a greater story to be impressed upon your essence than the one you are currently dreaming up. Though you are brilliant, no doubt about it, my angel of love, there is one who is even more so. The imagination of this great writer is beyond our comprehension. The stories that pour forth from that cosmic poet in every moment are so rich they inspire the creation of art and music. One such story is especially created for you. Yes, you. With a starring role and all the best supporting cast, you shall gasp in wonder, awe, glee, and delight when you hear it. It is a great romance, a great adventure, with an ending truly spectacular and divine. Would you wish to hear it? Become attentive now. Put your own tales aside, as dramatic as they may seem right now, and prepare to be entranced by the greater storyteller, the living poet of love as you are entranced in a tale of your 
unfolding divine destiny. There are moments on the path of love that seem to focus on letting go, letting go of identities, of knowledge, and certainty, of opinion, and even attempts at control. We may feel as though we are being stripped back to our core, and even then perhaps further still. We may wonder if we can bear it. What shall, if at all, remain intact through these rigors? We may feel challenged every time we attempt to become something great. As though we are blocked by circumstances beyond our control. Again and again, it is as though a greater hand smacks our wrist the moment we try to take hold of something firmly, someone, anything that brings us certainty or inner stability. Such are the rigors at an advanced stage on the path. We meet this challenge when our soul is ready for it. Why must it be thus? This is a sage question indeed. When we are asked to dispense with our story, the interpretations we have given to our life experiences over the years, we may not hear the request at first. We may vaguely note it, but not recognize the great divine source asking this of us, and so we do not give such an inclination due accord. We, we may persist with spinning our own tales instead. Oh, our mind may fancy itself to be a great wrangler of the word, impressed with its own judgments and declarations. Yet, in the light of comparison with the divine tale for our soul, all our fancies shall pass away, revealed as so very frail, like clouds dissipating in the sky. Perhaps we are graced with the realization there is so much more. Or perhaps we still don't get the hint and move into struggle as we try to enact what we think our story should be. We may hit obstacle after obstacle and create even more terror in our storytelling. That life is such pain, a struggle, that success may not be for us, that we are forgotten and unheard. Yet we could equally choose to wonder if obstacle after obstacle, closed door after closed door, is just a prompt to look for the open window to climb through. And if so, instead of seeking to impose our small story upon the great truth, we can live the truth of our divine destiny. Then something magical happens. We participate through presence along with the unfolding story of our soul journey. We open up to whatever is asked, asked of us, presented to us, happening through us, as we choose each day to come alive as much as we can. Then, as if by magic, there is something else that occurs. That would be grace. Real, rich, dripping with goodness and sustenance, grace. This is the sacred blessing that enables us to pay attention to opening doors rather than closing ones. The divine assistance that lets us know our life is proceeding according to a greater intelligence and plan. Once we stop thinking quite so much and live day to day, we will be blessed with the realization that our individual life story is so much more extraordinary and perfect than anything we could have summoned, even with our wildest imagination. This oracle comes with guidance for you, Leo. You are being, <clears throat> you are being asked to let go, to receive, to become empty, to be filled. This may mean letting go of attachment to a lover so you can receive genuine love. It may be of no longer holding on to a fantasy of your dream job, but of being guided into your most soulful and successful vocation. It may mean letting go of wishes for your body or health to be other than it is, so you can simply get on with living each day, taking steps into wellness without thinking beyond one day at a time. It is the divine paradox that when we are asked to surrender a story or fantasy, it is because reality is knocking at our door more often than not with the delivery of what we have been fantasizing about, but in the best way for us. The human experience of this paradox is that you may feel you are giving up hope, that your fantasy is dying. It may be very painful and bring you much grief. But all that is dying is your attachment and opinion about how it must be. This needs to happen so you can stop dreaming and start living it. This is what is happening for you now. Do not fear any part of your process. Embrace it without expectation. 
with trust in your heart that the divine is simply guiding you from fantasy into fulfillment. Sacred Honoring Ritual Place your hands in prayer and bow your head. Say aloud, I choose to trust in the great genius unfolding in my life. I give thanks for the blessings of grace now flowing into my heart. I have no need to know. I trust in the perfection of my being unfolding with innate intelligence and wisdom. Rumi, who loves me unconditionally, holds me in his protection, and I accept my destiny with a peaceful and trusting heart. Please help me to surrender the stories, attachments, fantasies, and fears that have held me back from living my heart's desires fully. I now choose unconditional trust in the loving genius of life to lead me into my fulfilled destiny now. So be it. You have completed your sacred honoring ritual. Thank you so much for joining me, Leo. I hope you've enjoyed this reading. And I send you many blessings for a wonderful month of February. Much love and light and blessings to all of you. Take care.